Alright, stick. Hit me. Ah! Why have you got such a feminine hand? <laughs> I can't punch you with my hand. It's not like there's two of us. Uh-huh. Can I have another card, please? Alright, what have you got? 21. Wow. 20. Oh, shit! Whew, sorry I am late. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my top 20 games of 2016. Are you doing your top 20 video? Yes, I'm doing it right now. Get out. 2016 has been a weird and divided year, but as always, we've had some fantastic games. So, before we go through them, let me remind you that this is my list, my opinions, and I didn't play every single game this year, so if there are some games that are your favourite, I'm sorry, Overwatch, I didn't play it, so it won't be on the list. Let's get to the list. First, two honourable mentions and a super honourable mention. The super honourable mention is out in Japan, but not anywhere else, and that's why I'm including it. First up, Overwatch. I mentioned I haven't played it, and that's my bad. My bad internet, that is. I literally can't play online games. My internet is too slow. I know. It sucks. I want to play it. Bound. This game didn't have much substance, but damn was it a beautiful game. Bound has you playing this ballerina traveling through a distorted magical world. Meanwhile, there's another girl looking at painful memories of her past in a diary. Both characters are on the same journey despite the difference between them. It's a really creative way to tell a story and I loved it. I'd definitely give it a try, if only for the fact that you can stop the gameplay at any time and move the camera anywhere in the level and take pictures with filters. I guarantee you, you'll create hundreds of potential desktop backgrounds. Persona 5 Persona 5 is my 2017 Game of the Year. I'm saying that without any hesitation. Something will have to come along and blow my fucking mind to stop me thinking that. I've played the Japanese version and it's a goddamn masterpiece. It's changed the standard for turn-based RPGs and I can't wait to finally gush about this game in front of you all. That sounded way dirtier than I intended. Pokemon Go. This is the game that got people to go outside. People abandoned their cars, they got attacked, violated, discovered dead bodies, and some even died, all with the same goal. To catch them all. What a time to be alive. Or dead. Pokken Tournament was an alright fighting game with the worst voice acting I have ever heard in a video game. Saw you the rising star, are you? This is your first promotion test. But you don't call that worried. Show me what you can do. Something is coming this way. Was that... Was that... Mewtwo? Apparently it was Mewtwo. That was a little unexpected. But... These were professional voice actors. At least... I think they were? I mean, maybe they just got Joe and Barbara from the office to do a couple of accents. It was just fucking atrocious. Anyway, the gameplay felt really good, looked stunning, had some really cool Pokemon, and had a weird fetish for fire types. Taking up four of the 15 Pokemon at launch, with grass and water each taking up one. Also, why is Pikachu and Pikachu Libre separate characters? Pikachu is not Barbie! You don't have hundreds of costumes. Where's your dignity, man? Ginger Beyond the Crystal wasn't the best game. Some could argue it isn't a good game. It lags badly in the overworld, has very odd difficulty spikes, and adds a pointless fetch quest right before the final level and only then. But you know what? This game made me happy. It had Super Mario Sunshine-esque platforming levels, creative themes, and was just a lot of fun. It's the beginning of the return of 3D platformers, and it's bloody fantastic. Flat Kingdom is a beautiful 2D platformer with a rock, paper, scissors style attack pattern. It's actually a really unique idea that I haven't seen implemented before. You can turn into a circle, square or triangle and that will affect your movement as well as affect which type of enemy you can kill. Every enemy in the game uses the same gimmick and I loved it. 
When I let's played it, it suffered from lag occasionally and had a few unclear sections, but since then a lot of the issues I had have been changed or fixed, and I think it's a pretty damn good indie game, especially for their first. Huge props to you, Fat Panda Games. The Witness is, I think, the most confusing and satisfying puzzle game I've ever played. You're placed into a world and you have to solve line puzzles. That's it, that's the game. But there are 600 very different line puzzles, and honestly, they don't get old. But holy crap are they hard to figure out. Every puzzle has a very obvious solution when you figure out what the gimmick is. If someone told you it has 600 line puzzles, you'd think it was boring, but it's so entertaining as you even solve some puzzles using the world itself. It's just a very impressive creative game and I loved it. Skylanders is either very entertaining or just good, which is a weird double-edged compliment. This year I had some creative levels, but it was very short and, if I'm honest, it wasn't the most creative this series has been. I love the idea of being able to create your own Skylander. It's a brilliant thing for all ages, and it had Crash Bandicoot and Cortex in it. That's pretty great, that sold me. Skyrim in HD on PS4 with mods. Enter the Gungeon. This might just be my new favourite roguelike game. Randomly generated onslaughts as you pick up a variety of insane guns. It's hectic, bonkers, brilliant, bizarre and so flipping fun. Paper Mario Color Splash is really a love it or hate it kind of game. It's very much like Sticker Star and that's a big problem for some people because it's not Thousand Year Door. However, at the same time, it's so very different from Sticker Star. Instead of stickers, you use cards and paint. Paint cards do more damage, and you can collect more paint by winning paint experience through battles. Because of this and the card combat being generally more fun, the battles, although technically optional for the most part, are super fun. Every level was incredibly creative, every character, although mostly Toads, I'll admit, had a different, unique personality, and the game never failed to make me laugh. The story was bland, sure, but the individual turmoils throughout levels kept me hooked. Nintendo's writing team did a brilliant job at that. Now we just need a super edgy complex story with different characters and we'll have something truly special. We've waited seven long years, but we finally have Team Eco's third masterpiece, The Last Guardian. This emotional journey shows the bond between a young boy and his new bird dog pet, whom he freed from captivity. You'll work together, save each other's lives, and feel emotionally attached to Trico. His pain is your pain. Your pain means you should probably see a doctor, that's not good for you. Without spoiling too much, just be prepared to have tissues. And that's not because there's a sexy bird dog on the screen. Thank you very much for watching the video everyone, I hope you have enjoyed it. Stick around for part 2 that will be out before the year's end, I don't have a finalised date. Hopefully you have enjoyed it so far. Tell me, what's your favourite game of the year? Uh, or if not, uh, what's your 20th to 11th favourite games? That's a bigger ask, isn't it? <laughs> Probably. Um, but yeah. No, I, I, there have been a really good selection of games this year, so it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see what you all think. Um, but thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and next time, we're going to see the top 10. See you then. Take care. Bye-bye.